Hello, in this presentation, we will be recording a sales receipt and deposit from a new customer within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been following along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars. If not, that's okay. We can follow along with the entering of the sales receipt and the deposit. We'll be covering what the sales receipt is, how to enter the sales receipt, and what the journal entry will look like, as well as the recording of the deposit how it relates to the sales receipt, what will happen to the financial statements when that is done. If you have the backup up until this point, then you can restore that. Go into the file and restore. We're going to have the open windows open. So we're going to go to view open windows here and then have the open windows open. I'm actually going to close everything except for the home tab. So I'm going to close everything up. We have the home tab only open window. If you don't have the home tab open, it's in the customers or I'm sorry, in the company and home tab. We're going to be working here in the customers section. What we have is the receipt of a, um, a sales receipt, which means that a customer is in the shop. We're selling guitars, purchased a guitar from the shop. We're going to get paid at the point in time of the sale, as opposed to when we have an invoice in which we bill the client and we expect payment in the future. So an invoice in our case, if we were to be selling guitars, maybe more in the case of we shipped the guitars, the guitar went out and we expect to receive payment in the mail, as opposed to if we're having a create sales receipt, we can imagine someone in the shop purchasing a guitar and therefore we're going to create the sales receipt at that point. The journal entry recorded when we have the create invoice or the accounts affected would be that the receivable would go up, people would owe us money. The revenue would go up, we would record the sale. We would also have, if we're selling stuff, as we are here, selling merchandise, another half to that, one being the inventory going down for what we sold, in this case, uh, guitar or guitar equipment. And then we're going to have the cost, cost of goods sold on the income statement. When we have the sales receipt, only difference then is, of course, that we're going to be receiving payment in some form at that point and therefore not increasing the receivable, the amount people owe us, but some form of payment, typically cash. So let's see what that looks like. We're going to create the sales receipt and then we're going to record the deposit related to that sales receipt and any other deposits that we have at that point. Looks like there's two of them. So we're going to create sales receipt. And we're going to have a new customer. So if we select the drop down, we got uh, Garcia Guitar, and it's not here at this point. So we're going to have to add that. Fastest way to add the customer would be just to type in customer name. And then we're going to select a tab, and it's going to ask us to add the customer. We're going to select tab, and it's going to say, do you want to add the customer? We don't have the customer in our list. We're going to say yes. We're going to add it with the quick add feature rather than the setup, meaning we are not going to put the address and the phone number and the contact information, which we would probably want to do if it was a customer that we wanted to get repeat business from. But for purposes of the sales receipt, we just need the name here. And that's what we're going to be working with at this time. We're going to keep the template we are using. We're going to say that it was a check that we received. That's the form of payment. The date, the date's going to be 021221. We will be working this problem within the future. So we're going to say February 12th, 2021. The sales number will populate on its own. Sold to Garcia Guitar. We don't have an address because we didn't populate the address within the customer field. So we're going to keep that as is. The check number, we're going to write 8541. Now that's not the check number for a check that we are writing. That's the check number of the check that we are receiving. And it's good to have the reference there. It's not required, but it's good to have. Then we're going to say the item that we sold, the guitar that we sold was an ELP. If we select the drop down, we see it's going to be this item there. If we type it in ELP, it should pull up. So there it is. And if we say tab, the description will appear. Tax, quantity, we're going to have one of those. The rate is going to be 500, therefore the amount 500. We do have sales tax, that at 5%. And that 5% is an example number. It's going to change from state to state. Uh, it's going to be an item that we have to set up to calculate the sales tax and make sure that that's set up within the preferences to calculate the sales tax if needed. And that will be our total amount. 
What will this do when we record it? We see that 500 will increase the amount that we received, in this case a check, a check that has not yet been deposited, therefore increasing undeposited funds rather than the checking account. And the credit of that 500 is going to go to sales. There is going to be a second half of that, however, because we are selling uh, inventory. That's going to be cost of goods sold and the related account de decrease in inventory. Note, too, that the undeposited fund is going to be for 525 The sales amount will be for 500 The difference of 25 is what's going to be recorded in uh, what is due in terms of a liability to the state for sales tax. Let's take a look at the cost. Where could we find that just to know where that could be found? Note that it's not on the sales receipt because we don't want to show it to the customers. In order to see it, we can go to the lists up top and go to item lists. And if we find this item, this uh, ELP right there, we then open that up. I'm going to go to items at the bottom and we're going to edit item. And that will give us what the cost was. So it cost us 400. That 400 is not on the sales receipt. Only the sales price of 500 is. But we know that this computer will record that for us. After we record it, we can take a look and see what happened and see what happened in terms of the cost of goods sold and the decrease in inventory related to that 400 amount. Closing this back out. Closing this back out. We're back to our sales receipt. We're going to say save and close and then we'll go and see what happens in terms of our financial statement. Save and close and it's going to say you have changed the transaction. I'm going to say yes we want to record that. And we're going to go to our balance sheet first. So let's go to the reports up top scrolling down to company and financial and then scrolling down to the balance sheet standard. We're going to change the date range top left customize the report. And it's going to be from 010121 to 123121. So January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2021. Okay. There is our items. We know that we received a check, but it didn't go into the checking account yet. It went into undeposited funds. So we're going to double click on undeposited funds and take a look at that. Here it is there. There's the 525. If we double click on that there is the sales receipt that we have just generated. So that's for the full 525, including the sales tax. That's what we got the check for. If we close that out, close that out. Let's go to the income statement side and see what the sales receipt was for, what the revenue was for. If we go to the reports, company and financial, profit and loss, and then change the dates from 01, 01, 172, 12, 31, uh, 2 1, I should say, not 1 7, 2 1. So January 1st, 2021 to 12 31 2021, that being the year that we are working this problem in. In the merchandise sales, we should have an increase there from this transaction, from this sales receipt. Double clicking or zooming in on that, we see the 500 there for the Garcia guitars. So it's only the 500. If we double click on that, we're only taking the 500, not the added 25, although we received. 525 that difference of 25 is going to be what is owed to the state so we're going to close this back out and we close this back out take a look at that that's going to be on the balance sheet side go into the balance sheet and then we're going to go to liabilities where we have the sales tax payable double clicking on sales tax payable we see that 25 that we owe double clicking on that 25 we see the amount uh, the, our same sales receipt and that 25 the, the sales tax calculated on that sales receipt. We're then going to close this back out. Close this back out. Now let's take a look at the inventory item. So if we scroll back up to the top, we have the other current assets. We have the inventory item. If we double click on the inventory, we see the Garcia guitar here. There's the 400. If we double click on that, we see the sales receipt and we don't see the 400 here. Why? Because that's going to be part of the cost that we're not going to put here, but it is recorded by QuickBooks on a perpetual inventory basis. Closing this back out. Now note that we do have some other items here that were entered in a date after this. So our dates 
uh, are varied a bit. We're going a little bit back and forth in this problem. It is going to be an example problem. So we'll have to deal with that a little bit. We're going to close this back out. And then we'll go to the profit and loss and look at the other side of that piece. The inventory decreasing and the cost of goods sold then. The cost of the goods that we are selling. The expense related to the revenue that we are earning. Double clicking on that. We see Garcia Guitars here. There's that 400 again. There's the other side of that. So this simple sales receipt actually has a lot going on. If you can understand what's going on with the sales receipt in terms of the financial statements. It's worth uh, going back and forth and making sure you understand those relationships. Going to close this back out. Close this back out. We're going to go back to the home. And now we're going to make the deposit. Now we have three deposits that we need to make. Remember that when we recorded the create sales receipt, it put the amount of the checks in undeposited funds. Now we want to group those all into the same deposit that we will be making at the bank and deposit them at the same time. That's what we'll do now. We're going to say click the deposit. Now since we have three deposits that we need to deposit, this window will pop up. If we had no deposits that were, that were in undeposited funds that we need to deposit, then this window would not pop up and we would only see the window behind. So in this case, we want to deposit these three checks. So I'm going to check all three of them out. And when we make the deposit, we're going to group them all together and deposit them into the bank at the same time. That then will group on the bank statement at an amount of 825 and will be the same grouping we will see on our books, therefore making it easier for us to reconcile the bank account at the end of the month. So we're going to say OK. There it is. There's the 825. We're in the checking account. That's the only checking account we have. If you have multiple checking accounts, you want to make sure you're in the correct one. We are going to make the deposit as of uh, 02-12-21. Uh, and the deposit's going to be the deposit. That will be it. Once we record this, it's going to increase the checking account with a uh, debit or increase the checking account. And it's going to decrease the undeposited funds down to zero. So let's record that and check it out and see if that's what actually happens. So we're going to say save and close. And then we're going to go back to the balance sheet and see what is going on with the balance sheet. We know that the checking account here then should be going up. Double clicking on the checking account. Scrolling to the bottom we see this deposit here. There's the 825 there. Double clicking on that, we see the deposit of 825. There's that amount. We're going to close this back out then. And close this back out. We don't see, note, the undeposited funds. It went away. Why? Because it went down to zero. That's what we want it to happen. But if we want to verify and look at the activity in the undeposited funds, one way to do that would be to go to lists at the top, go to the chart of accounts. And then look for that undeposited funds and uh, we'll look at the activity within it. So it's recorded as an other current asset. So it should be at the top. If we just double click on that line item within the lists, we'll see the activity. There it is. There's the deposit. Uh, there's the decrease in the, and there's the deposit, which decreased the undeposited funds to zero. And if we double click on that, we should then see the uh, sales receipt. If we close that back out, the deposit's actually right above it. Here's the deposit. There's the deposit. So they're both on the same date. And it looks like the deposit was put above the sales receipt. But they're both there. They're both on the same date. The sales receipt is an increase to the undeposited funds. And then the deposit is decreasing it back to zero. The way it was input here, we were at zero. Then the deposit they recorded first making it go negative in terms of the undeposited register. And then we had the sales receipt bringing it back to zero.